In this video, I'm going to take a look at the Slate Digital Virtual Mix Rack. It's a fantastic collection of real classic sounding EQs and compressors. And I'm really excited about it. It's been something we've been waiting for for a long time. And I'm still finding my way with it. But what I wanted to do is to drop them in on a finished track here. And just to see how it's going to help me in a, a DIY mastering process. Another thing that I've got um, here for this video is the Sample Magic AB plugin. This is going to allow me to cross reference against another tune that I think is a strong reference master and I'm using a spirit chaser track called conch for me this is a great reference track it's a little bit old but I think it still sounds fantastic big shout out to Richard Earnshaw on that one and so basically um, let me just play you what we got and I'm going to drop in the VMR soon so here it is and you might recognize this if you've been following my Instagram channel I've been teasing it on a few videos starts off with a, a neo soul kind of vibe um, you can see up here the tempo 85 and um, gradually changing here that wasn't deliberate that was just bad positioning for the automation you don't really notice it so much though and in the breakdown from bar 9 onwards there's basically a kind of space thing which is leading into the beginning of where the mid-tempo house section starts and this is I think it's about 118 or so we'll get that confirmed in a second there we go so just above 118 BPM so this is a track I'm just going to show you a couple of other sections it's a real relaxed kind of easygoing thing and um, it's more of a listening kind of vibe I think more so than a straight up club tune goes into another phase here and there's some nice extra elements just going to show you the mixer here at the moment on the master I've just got the tool here which is being used to reduce the gain before it's hitting whatever's coming next because my mix is pretty hot actually to be honest so that's what I've got and um, the reference track so let's just bring it up let's play that so you know we're hearing a massive difference there you know this is a, a proper professionally mastered tune that has been mixed down really well as well so it sounds great i've got to try and get my track close to that and um you know i'm going to try this vmr so you can see i've got it ready over here i did a search for slate in my browser and i'm going to drag this before the Magic AB. That Magic AB plugin has always got to go at the very, very end, and literally it's used for referencing against another track. But you can see here the Slate Digital VMR interface, and you've got a bit of a shopping list on the left-hand side. This is the devices that we can load in. And this reminds me of that kind of vertical rack concept like the Euro rack. Yeah, you, know, you can just slot in something and then get the benefits of the sound. And so, you know, I'm using this in a, a DIY master context, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in this compressor here these are apparently based on real pieces of hardware okay and this particular one I can't remember I should have read up really to be honest it beforehand you guys can obviously uh, let everybody know in the comments if you feel you want to two different circuits being emulated here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this in and I'm going to try a little bit of bus compression see how that feels um, in terms of the structure of the track let me just flip over here let me find somewhere where it's uh, reasonably lively let's go over here I'm going to leave it looping and um, let's bring this down so the first thing I'm going to do is just take a look at the ratios available so you can go right up to 10 that's really strong if I just want to gel the track together I'm going to keep it reasonably low on the ratio. Two is a pretty good starting point, to be honest. And what I'm going to do is adjust my attack speed here. So we've got varying degrees of slow. Not sure what the actual millisecond timing would be for that. Um, we can also adjust the release. So let's make this somewhere around here. I'm going to see how this feels. Just going on gut instinct at the moment. You know, generally we want to go for a reasonably slow attack when we're doing the bus compression. I'm going to bring the threshold down. We should start to see the meter bouncing around here. 
Now you notice also that the level will drop and that's because we're compressing, okay? So let's take a look. There's a couple of dBs that it's reducing. Just gonna bring it up. Let's have a listen, before and after. So that feels really nice at the moment. Just feels like it's tidying it up a little bit. I'm gonna keep it there. Let me try the other circuit. It may not be immediately obvious because it's such a shallow amount of compression here. Let's try and exaggerate that. Gonna bring the threshold down a bit more, take the ratio up. Now it also has to be said that I'm listening on iPods, um, iPhone earbuds, but I've got pretty used to them. So fingers crossed we'll be able to get some great results out of this. So at the moment, that's feeling quite nice. Can't make up my mind on these earbuds, which of these two circuits I wanna use. I'm not hearing enough of a difference at the moment. But from what I remember, circuit two is good for the bottom end. So I'm gonna sort of leave it on that for the moment. Switch it out again. And it actually would be a good idea to bring up that Magic AB because we've got a meter on here that can be used if I bring this over here. So with this on again, let's just take a look at the values. So we've got peak NRMS over here. Let's see if I can reset these. So this is without the compression. So a high peak of minus 13. Uh, RMS minus 27. Let's turn it on. So it's gone up a little bit more there. So actually it gives us a, a perceived improvement. I'm gonna try and bring that down a bit so that we get more of an even response between the two. How are we doing? There's definitely an increase there. Let me take this off. So minus 14. Maybe I should just bring that gain down just a little bit more. And let's turn it on again. Okay, so similar peak. It feels like it's gelling it together a lot nicer though. So I'm gonna leave that. Let's do something else. Let's bring on one of these EQs. So let's drop this in. We can move these left and right. That determines the insert order, so the signal flow. So at the moment, we're going from the compressor into the EQ, but I could easily pick it up and go EQ into compressor. So let me drag it over here. Now what I fancy doing is just have a play around with this, but really I want to reference the other track. So here we go. So what I'm hearing there is a real nice kind of airy crispness. Maybe this track could do with um, a little bit of work. I'm just gonna experiment, bring up the highs. You hear that? Very, very crisp on that. So this is a high shelf. And from what I remember, this is based on a Neve EQ. This bypass, you hear how much of a difference that makes on the top end. Just gonna ease it back a bit. So that's a very sweet sounding extra brightness on there. I'm gonna experiment by rolling the bass up a bit. So we're gonna take a low shelf, gonna come down here. Let's give it a boost. You hear that? So we got ourselves a, a fatter bottom end. Maybe a little bit too much. What's the frequency again? Let me try it a bit higher. A low shelf really is like a bass control and you can set it at a decent frequency. I'd say if you're gonna work on bass anywhere between about 60 and 80 and then use this to boost the bass or cut the bass. Cause look, you hear that? Let's turn in the bass down. So a lot of classic desks, they had a low shelf from about 80. Some of them would be 60, so let's just see. Maybe somewhere in the middle. And let me take that off. 
back on again. So it's really fattening it out. The other thing I want to do is take this band here. So this is a parametric band and I can select a frequency here. So 0.36 of a K, which works out as 360 Hertz. Let me show you here if I boost it. So it kind of muddies it up. And maybe if I just dip back a bit. So listen to the difference. So that's without the EQ and that's with it. The other thing that I'm going to do is experiment with some frequencies here. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing them out to exaggerate them and then just dipping back a bit and seeing how that feels. Can you hear, I mean, basically that sounds really flat now, but when I turn on this FGN, it just feels more glossy, uh, more professional, basically. Feeling I'm pushing it a little bit too much on that bottom end on the bass. Now what I'm gonna do, I mean, the, at the moment, the levels are very, very different between my reference track and this track, but I'm gonna have a listen and see how the, the kind of frequencies feel. So let's switch it over. Okay. So you can hear I've got that more kind of polished professional sound coming from this EQ now, I think. Um, I might have to take a listen to some individual sounds now. I'll tell you why. Because I'm feeling that some of the sounds need a little bit more presence. Um, the first thing that I want to do though is get a sense of how this would sound with a mastering limiter on it because I need to just reference the levels really very quickly. I'm going to take, um, so what I've got is L2, which is um, something that I use a lot. I'm going to place this before the AB. So this is a mastering limiter. I'm going to take it about minus two for the output and then bring the threshold down a bit. Let's have a listen. I mean, bear in mind that my mix is quite low already, so I'm having to bring the threshold down quite away here. So let's have a look. And now with the reference track. Okay, still a fair amount of difference. There's some work for me to do here. I mean, one thing I could do is bring that threshold down further so there'll be more reduction. It feels like it's breaking up a little bit though. Referencing again. Okay, let me ever listen to this kick. I'm feeling I could do with something going on here. So let me bring in that um, slate again. So we're gonna go for the slate VMR again on here. So I'm gonna work this in a different fashion. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this. Um, let me check this EQ out. This is like, a, I think this is supposed to be like an SSL EQ, which is supposed to be a lot more transparent. Um, but let's have a listen. Let's see what I can do here. So it feels like something needs to kind of be brought out. Something needs to be exaggerated. I'm going to take the frequency up here. You hear that? So what it's doing is it's giving it more presence. Because before I felt like it was a little bit too thuddy and subby. Let me just see what else we got here. 
I mean, this EQ is amazing. Um, when I've used other EQs, other digital EQs, when I've been boosting by such a large amount, I mean, I'm going plus six dBs there. It's always felt nasty, but that's actually feeling really good. Let me bypass. So actually, that's um, more in line with what I was wanting to achieve, to be honest. I'm going to reference that at the beginning because there is that section. Oh, I had some uh, automation here, didn't I? Um, let me just see what's going on with that. Why have I got some automation? Now, I'm still finding my way with a couple of things with Bitwig. Mm -hmm. Just need to take out that node. But actually, to be honest with you, um, there's no point in me wasting time here because it's not actually changing the value. So let's not get bogged down with that. Let me just go over here and have a listen from the beginning. <laughs> Now, the other thing that I've noticed here is it looks as if I've got compression over the whole group of the beats. Okay, I quite like the sound of that. I'm not going to take that off, um, but the kick there has definitely been benefited from the VMR. Um, let me go over to this section here, have a listen again. Yeah, I love how that kicks sounding now. And this kick just reminding myself. Just gonna roll off the um, lows a bit here. And that's using the built-in Bitwig DJ EQ. Okay, this rim shot. I wonder if I could do something with that. So once again, VMR. I'm gonna try the Neve this time. A bit more character. A little bit more life there. I wanna give it a little bit more body though. Let's just try. Yeah, I like that. But it's probably bringing the level up a lot more. Okay, that's working nice. Um, the one thing I need to cross-reference again is the intro because there's a different um, drum element here. Okay, so this one is hitting that massive reverb on there. Um, that feels like it could do with easing back a little bit. Let's bring this again. I'll tell you what, let's drop in another VMR. So this is like a virtual mixing console, you know? So we're dropping in these classic. Let me just bring this one in again. Maybe a little bit of low cut this time. A bit too much, let's roll it back. And by the way, that big reverb splash is part of that breakdown. Maybe I should actually roll down the highs. Let me have a listen. Now, you will notice that I've gone here plus 0.8 dBs, but remember there's tons of internal headroom. 
And, um, you know, people who are very, very focused on their gain staging would be kind of maybe saying, what's he doing? But for me, that's not feeling too much. Um, so I'm going to leave that as it is. That's fine. I like the presence there with the snare. I did feel that the highs being rolled back were just kind of making it lose some of the energy that I liked about it. So look, we've got a couple of things here that I've changed. Um, I'm going to listen again. Let's maybe go over here. One of the things that I'm thinking about is bass. I'm just going to take that amplifier release shorter slightly. Let's flip it onto mono so there's no overlaps just in case there were some. Let's have a listen again. Just going to drop in um, the VMR here. So this is like a keyboard. Um, it's very interesting textures here coming from a collection of samples that have been twisted around. Let me try this compressor again. What I'm trying to do is balance out the levels because it feels at the moment they're kind of inconsistent. Some sounds are jumping out more than others. Yeah, look, you can really see that by the variance in the game reduction. Faster with the, the attack. Yeah, wicked, wicked. So that's working nicely. Gonna bring up the level. Okay, let me take a look at this bass. Let's drop the VMR in. So what am I feeling about this? Um, maybe that when the kick's there, we need to be able to... Um... Actually, it's not so bad. I thought there was a lack of definition between the two, but it feels like it's nice. Let me just see if there's something that I can do with this. Let's once again bring on the red compressor, the FG401, and also a big shout out to Fabrice Gabriel for these amazing algorithms. Just taking the ratio up just a little bit. Let's go for a faster attack on this one. Slow it down just a little bit. Actually, this feels a lot more controlled. And maybe that's what I was feeling that was just a little bit too wild. Okay, working nicely. Let's bring these back. Okay, do you know what? I'm really happy with that at the moment. If you notice between the A and B, I know they're very different tracks so that we don't have to feel that they have to be identical. But if you notice the crest factor here, they were even and so was the actual peak level as well. So that was feeling pretty close. Um, it looks as if this one's right up to zero, um, but mine's minus 0 0.2, so it's very, very slightly quieter. But that's sounding good. I'm really pleased with that. And so just in terms of summary, I mean, you can backtrack on the video, of course what i applied on the master was 
the FG401 in the circuit 2 and that was used to gel the track together. The FGN, the new VQ, was used to warm it up a bit and take out a little bit of muddiness, reduce a little bit of the frequency energy around 3.2k and then to brighten it up the highs. The other changes were just to bring out certain elements in certain sounds and also to balance um, the variation in volume in some of the others. But I think that's sounding great. So what I'm going to do is just uh, roll it back and just uh, let you hear a couple more bits of the track. Yeah, that's sounding wicked and I'm really pleased with that. Of course, I do need to play it on some proper speakers and uh, make sure that everything is sounding as it should be. You know, play it on a variety of different systems. And also there's a certain amount of things that need to be finished in the track. It's almost there as a composition. So that's it. If you're interested in it, go and check out the demo of the VMR. It's fantastic. As I said, I'm a big fan of the Slate plugins. You do need an iLock, um, but there is a deal at the moment if you get in there quick where you get the iLock for free. It's highly recommended. 